friend. This is Solomon from Paduk Club, and I am about to do some just regular maintenance cleanup on this unboxed stuff we've got. We've got um, a bowl from a previous set that uh, I just stripped all the varnish off, and we're just going to wax that. Um, got another few sets of bowls that need cleaning. I would say the, the worst are this one, which it looks like it was in a someone's storage unit for a long time getting dripped on. I think it'll really come out looking a lot like this one. I think it's quince, but the lids especially, and the bowls need a lot of cleaning. And for that, just uh, soap and water is fine. Um, it's okay to use um, a damp rag on wood as long as you dry it right away. The, the key with the wood is um, that wood cracks as it dries out. As it loses its moisture, it shrinks, and that's what causes it to crack. So what I want to do is use some of my wax, um, linseed oil, and wax on these. The linseed oil will, will seep in and form a resin inside that'll be hard. It'll add some strength to the bowls, and then the wax will provide a protective coating. The wax also has a little bit of turpentine in it, so that um, softens the wax and enables the linseed to penetrate into the wood uh, considerably better. Um, on this side, we've got some bowls that need, one of these is, has a crack in it, so I'm going to have to uh, take some wood glue to that crack and some clamps, and we'll put that bowl back together. And we'll do that before we clean it that way, when we, when we take off the extra glue um, and give the bowl a good cleaning, that'll take care of it. Um, if, if soap and water is not enough, um, I'll end up using turpentine. Mineral spirits is another thing you can do um, simply with just a clean cotton cloth. Um, if you want to get fancy, you might use a, a, a plastic abrasive tool like uh, just something you would use on dishes, but, but be careful of uh, things that are uh, dyed a certain color. If you've got a blue um, sponge, you might end up getting that blue all over your, 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 your wood. And over here I've got a Polonia box that, again, has also probably seen a little bit of uh, a moisture and mold in its day, so I think I'm just going to take a bit of 400 or 600 grit sandpaper to that. So I'll probably just put this on time lapse and uh, take the stones out of the bowls, get them soaking in soap and water, and then uh, the white stones into hydrogen peroxide for a week or so, and then some mineral oil for the black stones, and we'll just uh, we'll just go through that. I've got my my favorite plastic tubs for washing and drying, I just a, a plastic bowl that has seen better days, and my favorite tortilla warmer. Again, plastic's great because slate and shell can chip, so you don't want to use a, a metal or glass bowl if you can avoid it. And then the other tools I've got here, uh, just some uh, four zero steel wool. That's uh, just the super fine steel wool. Some call it quad aught, and I find that that's a really good um, thing to use either for stripping uh, old varnish off or for applying wax. Um, the only time I wouldn't use it is uh, maybe if you're putting wax on your board, the end grains of the wood um, can really catch steel wool. And so that might be the one place you might just use, use a, a cotton cloth or something to try to wipe it in. Another option would be a uh, plastic brush, just like a toothbrush and a hairdryer to keep the wax workable. Because you really just need a, a thin layer of wax uh, to keep the water out, to keep uh, moisture and mold from being able to get to the surface of the wood. So that's what we'll do. Feel free to uh, add some questions in the comments. I'll reply to all of those. And off we go. So I'm going to try something new and do a, a voiceover. We'll see how that works as far as sound goes. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do with this refurbishing is to clean off the stripped bowls. I'm hunting old varnish um, that might not have come off with a stripper, just using some turpentine and a cloth that I cut up. I realized I was working on newsprint and uh, that ink gets on the gets on the bowl, so I got got rid of that, got that out of the way. And then I tried the, the turpentine on the, the moldy bowls. Um, 
And with, with just the cloth, it, it wasn't quite coming up. So I set those aside uh, for later. Um, ended up using steel wool on those. I'd come back to them again. I kept, I kept wondering what, what to do with those. Um, then I realized I should probably be multitasking while I did that. So I, I got out some clamshell, put, got those soaking with uh, just a few uh, drops of, of dish soap. Um, those are going to, I just sort of set those aside for later. Let, let those, let those soak in soapy water along with the slate shells in their own bowl. And, um, and then, um, the clamshell, those, that set of clamshells is pretty dirty. So I set to work scrubbing those off, uh, with a toothbrush and tried to give you a good view of what I was doing. It's just, um, just, just a regular, uh, plastic brush. Any plastic brush will do. You'd really want to, uh, treat the clamshells kind of like teeth. Like imagine, imagine you all, you're an old person, you got sensitive teeth and you want to take care of them. Well, you want to scrub them with something that's softer than the, the shell is. So a plastic brush is fine. A toothbrush works good. Um, when you're rinsing them, try to use a tub, a plastic tub, if you have one instead of glass or metal, simply because you don't want them to uh, dent or chip, um, with the harder against a harder material. And, and this takes time. I, I put on a YouTube video, I watched some Dwyer in, and uh, just scrub away some of the gunk. Now you can, you can go straight from just a little soap and water bath to um, rinsing them off and putting them in hydrogen peroxide, but the more grit and gunk you get off, the less the, uh, you need, the, the deeper the hydrogen peroxide can get. You know, underneath, underneath that grit is more grit, and you want to get down to the, to the beautiful white shell. So. So go ahead and give them a, a, a gentle scrub to get off what you can. Um, rinse them again. And then um, I use some distilled water um, to give them a final rinse. And that makes sure you're not going to get any water spots, mineral deposits if you have hard water. And then I just uh, rinse that again. Um, so a distilled water rinse and then set them out on a towel to dry in the sun. And let those uh, go ahead and fully dry. And for the clamshell, that's all you need. Um, with the with the slate shell, go ahead and again a distilled water rinse is great. And then uh, I set those aside. Um, I used mineral oil on those later. Um, just jumble them around in a bag with a handful of drops of mineral oil, and then polish them off one at a time. I think we were watching the expanse while we did that. So um, the turpentine's evaporated, um, so now it's it's ready. I'm ready to uh, apply some wax to these nice extra super extra large bowls. I use steel wool for that. It's quad dot steel wool or four zeros, and the wax adds um, acts as a lubricant, so we're not actually scratching the wood um, with that really soft steel wool, and just giving it a, a nice even coat all the way around. Um, I try not to. I try to get all the all the globs off, and that way you're not getting any linseed oil dark spots. And then I'm gonna give it give that half an hour to an hour for the turpentine to evaporate before I uh, mess with that wax. That wax does need a little bit of time to set. Um, and then I'll, I'll I'll come back to those to remove the extra wa wax and give them a little buffing. Now back to the stones. Um, the stones come out of the their. They were in the window in the sun, so they dried pretty quickly. Went ahead and put those in a bottle with a, a hydrogen peroxide bottle and then filled it with another. Filled it up with hydrogen peroxide, making sure they're fully submerged. Um, just putting aside the black stones for later to put mineral oil on them. Now it was time to uh, deal with this set of bowls that had cracks in them. These weren't terrible cracks. The bowls weren't coming apart. But I did want to make sure that they, they set pretty well. So um, I went ahead and got some clamps from the garage. Um, I only seem to have one that had a little rubber, rubber uh, feet on it. I didn't want to scratch the bowls really hard with these metal clamps. So I struggled a little bit uh, with figuring out how to do this because the, you know I needed to really needed a second pair of hands is what I needed uh, to get you know that crack open just a little bit so I could get the the glue in and then squeezing the pieces of wood together until you've got glue squeeze out. That's the key, is to make sure that your wood is binding back in its original form. 
it'll squeeze out all the excess glue. And then there's a couple ways you can deal with that um, excess glue. Um, the easiest is just to take a damp cloth and clean off that squeeze out as you go using a fresh piece of the cloth for each glob of glue so that you're not just smearing glue across your entire project. Um, the second method is what I went with is to let, go ahead and let that glue partially dry. And then you'll be able to peel it off with a, with a, um, a sharp knife or a, a chisel or um, a scalpel kind of uh, exacto blade. And that, that glue will come off um, really easy, kind of like rubber, as long as it, you haven't let it dry all the way. Um, the second bowl only had a, uh, a micro fracture, so I just used rubber bands instead of clamps just to keep the bowl uh, in shape, squeezing that, uh, that glue um, while it dries. I used a couple Sharpies to um, act as spacers over the glue uh, seam itself. That way the rubber band isn't um, in contacting the glue and sticking to the bowl. Then it was um, back to another set of stones. Um, Take the, take the dried stones, um, or take the washed stones, get them drying, take the dried stones, get them soaking. Then um, went back to the, uh, the moldy bowls and went ahead and went to the garage and got some 400 grit sandpaper, um, which I needed anyway for the Polonia box. I tried it on the, the moldy bowls and I decided, you know, I was going to go with the turpentine, just turpentine and steel wool. So in the meantime, I used that sandpaper on the Polonia box. And this is something you want to do in the garage or outside. Um, you do want to wear a mask if you're sanding something. Um, and if you're going to uh, finish it afterwards, you want to make sure that you've gotten the... Um, all that sawdust off. You want to use a vacuum or um, some sort of uh, air pressure, pressurized air. You want to blow all that sand dust, sawdust away or use a tack cloth to, to pull it up off the wood before you uh, apply any wax or anything else to it. Um, I ended up dusting this wood later. Um, and I was just trying to get off um, just, just a layer. There seemed to be a little, you know, some water spots, some moldy spots on this old Polonia box and I just wanted to clean that up so that's what I did. Then uh, went ahead and set that side and turned back to the uh, the waxed bowls. It had been about it had been about 30 minutes to an hour so it was time to uh, go ahead and and take off go ahead and buff that. Went and took one of my new cut, newly cut pieces of cloth. Again, a t-shirt is great here. Um, something that's not going to have lint, linty pills on it that are going to um, stick in the wax. I realized I was working on newspaper again, and so I folded that up and got that out of the way and just gave them a nice buffing, smoothing that. That you really only need a thin uh, beeswax coating to uh, to make sure that these are, are water resistant. That that water is not going to get to the surface of the wood. So with that done, uh, I was back to the stones. Another set of uh, stones ready to um, dry in the sun, ready to go on hydrogen peroxide. And another set of white stones um, needed to be scrubbed. I kind of got frustrated with uh, the toothbrush method, just because just because doing one, each, each, it, it was really tedious, of course, but also really hard to work with toothbrush on a single stone at a time. So what I did was I went and got a bigger brush. I have some of these plastic cleaning brushes under my sink. Gave, cleaned one really well and then started uh, just pulling the stones along this larger, uh, slightly stiffer plastic bristles and just pulling the stones along those bristles to make sure that they were clean. And uh, turned on another Dwyer video and got to work. And so that's just an average day in, in refurbishing bowls and uh, stones. Well, friends, that's about it for today. Um, I've got a number of sets cleaned up. We've got two sets fully cleaned up. The stones are soaking in hydrogen peroxide. We have um, a couple of the bowls are glued, and we'll wait for that glue to set and dry, and we'll take a, a chisel or some other sharp blade to cut off the excess glue. 
Um, I've learned not to smear it and try to get rid of it all, but actually just to cut it off after the fact, and that we will minimize the amount of it I have to sand down. And I'll probably do some light sanding on those bowls. These ones are going to need quite a bit more. Um, we've got these bowls waxed, and they'll now need to cure. Since the, the wax has uh, linseed oil in it, um, I'm going to give those at least two or three days to cure. Probably just uh, let them cure for a week. And that allows the linseed to uh, fully dry. Um, not just dry, but, but actually oxidize and cure and do its thing. Um, you want to give the, enough time to cure, because it might feel dry after just uh, 24 hours, but it does need uh, more time to cure. Um, uh, in the case of my linseed oil, it is all natural, so I'm okay using it with bare hands. Um, so you might have seen me putting that on with a bit of steel wool, and you can use a, a cloth. Um, again, if you get two end grains on a board, you might find the steel wool will catch on those end grains and sort of get embedded. So a cloth is fine. Just remember to lay your cloth out completely flat to dry, because if you wad it up as that windseed dries, it builds heat and you can have spontaneous combustion. So make sure to either wash your rags out with water and detergent, um, or lay them flat out to dry before you get rid of them. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a few more sets of stones to to wash and get uh, into peroxide. Um, I did a really nice uh, light sanding with uh, 600 grit sandpaper on this polonia box to get some of the some of the marks off. And there's still a little bit of work left to do, but I'll do that off camera, and you'll see it up in my shop uh, for sale when it's ready. Um, so feel free to ask questions down in the comments. I'll be, sh I'll be sure to check those and reply to them. Again, store.baduk.club is where you'll find all this gear for sale. And as I continue to learn more, I'll continue to update our care instructions, which you can find at the very bottom of the page. Um, cheers and take care.